Let's get more on this from Michael Dunford. He's the East Africa Regional Director for the World Food Programme. And he joins me now live from Nairobi. Thank you very much for joining us here on TRT World. What exactly is the latest humanitarian situation on the ground in Sudan? And how has the ongoing fighting affected the humanitarian crisis? As you say, we have a crisis, a crisis on an enormous scale, and we are desperately concerned that unless there is a ceasefire, unless we have uh, a stop to all the fighting, the situation is only going to get worse. Before this uh, crisis started, there were already 15.8 million people who were hungry across the country. That number obviously is increasing dramatically because of what's happening. So we need a ceasefire. We need space for humanitarian actors to re-engage and we need to do it right now right if you can expand on those concerns what what are the major humanitarian concerns right now and how are aid agencies responding to the crisis in sudan because as we understand aid agencies international aid agencies are not able to enter the country right now well, in fact, we still have people as the World Food Programme inside. We already had, before the crisis, over 1,300 staff. We've removed some of the non-critical, but we've relain, remained a core team in Port Sudan, along with all of the national staff. So we have the capacity to respond. As indicated, we need food, we need water, we need shelter, we need to ensure that the population is able to access the services to meet their basic needs. And at the moment, this is hugely challenged because of the ongoing conflict, because of the ongoing insecurity. Right. So what would be a message to the international community? Uh, how can the international community help in addressing these issues to prevent uh, further suffering? So the first message clearly is we need an end to the fighting. And that is a message to the two principles. Uh, to, to ensure that there is space, that the ceasefire holds, and that there is space for humanitarian actors to re-engage. That then requires diplomatic efforts from the international community to force that to take place. Uh, as soon as that is done, then there is capacity inside the country, the World Food Programme and others, who can immediately gear up our operations to meet their needs. But with all of the insecurity, it's extremely dangerous. Unfortunately, tragically, the World Food Programme has already lost staff at the beginning of the crisis. And we are eager to ensure that that does not repeat itself. Right. And Mr. Dunford, according to the World Health Organization, almost 60 percent of healthcare facilities in the country have been closed. More than 500 people have already died. Thousands have been injured. So my question is, if this continues, what is uh, the outlook for the humanitarian crisis in Sudan, the long-term outlook for uh, the crisis? The outlook is devastating, even if the crisis stops today. The longer it goes on, the worse it is going to get, not only inside Sudan, but also in the neighboring countries. As you've seen, Chad, South Sudan, Ethiopia are already receiving refugees. These are countries that will struggle to absorb these additional refugees in countries where WFP is already providing less than a full ration because we simply do not have the levels of funding required. So not only for Sudan, although that, of course, is the most critical, but this crisis has potentially regional implications. And that's why it's essential that the fighting and the insecurity stops immediately and that we return to normality so that people can go home and meet their own needs. If they can't, the World Food Programme will be there with them to support them going forward. Indeed, the situation in Sudan it's is dire, to say the least. Uh, Mr. Michael Dunfer, thank you very much for talking to us here on TRT World. Really appreciate your taking out the time. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much.